the Wait. Tour de Chargers, who won? You're gonna get our opinions whether you want it or not. <laughs> Over the last year, I've done a series of videos, I think there's 10 in total, that I called the Tour to Chargers, going around to different uh, charging networks and doing charge tests with our uh, Chevy Bolt and occasionally the our Fiat 500E. Fiat 500E. Uh, the first one that we want to talk about is one that if you're driving a CCS car, uh, you're going to be very used to seeing, and that's going to be Electrify America. Electrify America, they're one of the most um, prolific charging networks, at least in this area. You see um, them a lot. Well, they're all over the place as well. And usually along most major interstates, you can find one about every 120 miles or so, give or take, mm -hmm. uh, in a different direction. Usually they have at least four charging stations, sometimes eight or more. We, I don't think we've ever seen, most of what we've, I've ever seen is like nine. Um, which is good that they have more than one because usually at an Electrify America, one of them's not working, at least one. Yeah, at least one. Or it's, it's throttled down. Now, those EA stations that are throttled down to 50 kilowatts don't affect us as much with our Bolt. Because it doesn't charge very fast anyway. But with a faster charging car, that's gonna be a bit of a headache for folks out there. Um, Often, if it's throttled down, they will give you a free charge, though. So sometimes it's worth it, depending on how much of a hurry you're in. And Electrify America is usually among the least expensive DC fast chargers that we've used. Mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when we have to pay for the DC fast charge, Electrify America is kind of where I would prefer, because even when they charge, uh, depending on what state you're in, by the minute or by the kilowatt hour, they're usually a little uh, less expensive. Um, the experience at Electrify America, you plug in, swipe to charge on the app, or if your car is set up to do plug and charge, uh, it, it'll do plug and charge there as well. But the big thing about EAs, Electrify America stations, is the Walmarts. Yeah, you get tired of Walmarts after a while because they're almost, almost all the EA stations are at Walmarts or Sam's Clubs, and so that's just where you're gonna stop if you need fuel you're going to be at a Walmart or a Sands Club parking lot. Now, they're not all at Walmarts, but most of them are. Several mm -hmm. of them are. Mm -hmm. And not all of those Walmarts are 24 hours. So if you are doing an overnight drive and you're trying to drive straight through, you may not be able to have a bathroom break at that charge stop because there might not be anything open. Yeah, yeah. Walmarts and Sands Clubs tend to take up a lot of space. So sometimes there's nothing else around there where you can go to the bathroom or get something to eat. Next up is EVGO. Now they're uh, starting to find EV, we're starting to find EV goes uh, more often than uh, we used to for sure. Yeah, um, they're expanding a little bit. They've got the Ultium branding on them right now and I do know that EV go is a Philly, is, has some kind of deal with General Motors because that's where we got our free uh, credits. Right. With the purchase of our vehicle, we got $500 worth of charging credits at EV go and 15 months and 30,000 miles later, we still have over $300 of that left. Um, <coughs> Partly because the places that we're going, there just aren't the right charging networks for us to use the free charges. We're having to pay for charges at Electrify Americas and other um, charge charging networks because the charge points just don't happen to be convenient to our trip. A lot of EV owners won't go to an EV Go because it used to be that their chargers were 50 kilowatts and that's that's all they would do. But lately we're finding 100 kilowatt EV Goes. We're even finding 350s. We found that beautiful one outside of Knoxville, Tennessee oh. at the Flying J truck stop. It has stop. a cover over it like uh, you're a person who doesn't want to get rained on. And it's trash great. Cans yeah. And, yeah. And a, not a huge walk across a massive parking lot to, to get to something to eat or drink or go to the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, it's, it's fairly accessible to the front door of the convenience store, which is pretty nice. Love the charging station. Extremely expensive. It was like yep. almost 90 cents a minute. You're paying for that roof, you, man. You pay for that roof. Um, but if you have the credits, definitely. EVgo is usually a little bit more expensive, and a lot of their chargers were the slower speeds. For a Bolt, they're great. For a faster charging EV, you might want to look on PlugShare to see how fast that EVgo charger can go. Uh, the only trouble that I've had with EVgo chargers, for me personally, is sometimes the screens don't react to uh, touch inputs, and uh, there's I can't find a way to stop the app to stop the charge on the app. I've looked I don't know how many times, and you can tell me in the comments what I'm doing wrong. That's great, but I've always been able to get the charge stopped. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. I'm usually off doing something else. I yeah. don't see it. <laughs> 
After them, after EV Go, let's talk about ChargePoint because oh, that's Charge the one Point. that we've probably used the next most. Mm -hmm. uh, we've encountered ChargePoint stations in Navasota, Texas on our Houston road trip. Yep. Uh, our first Tennessee road trip, we've found one in North Carolina and of course the one that's in Sevierville that we've used when we're there both times. And we had to use a few different charge points this last Tennessee road trip, especially our adventure in Jackson, Mississippi. Right, that was an adventure. <laughs> the only time I've ever had a problem charging at a charge point station. Now we, we've charged at a level two charge point with for no problem mm -hmm. at all. Uh, we do that from time to time, but and every other charge point we've used was great. It was seamless. The screens interacted well. This one in Sevierville, uh, I guess it's got a lot of scratch marks on it, uh, probably from nails. Uh, a lot of scratch marks on the screen and it was getting hard to read. Either that or the cats really like it. One of those two. Yeah. But our ex we didn't have a great experience at that one in, in Jackson, Mississippi because we got there. Uh, there were two units. One was being used by a Volvo that was recharging and the other one would not initiate. We tried five or six times and then a couple more times with the charge point customer service on the phone and they directed us to a hyundai dealership across the freeway luckily that one worked and we were mm -hmm. able to get a charge and move on but it's not a convenient spot the hyundai dealership was closed there was no place to go to the bathroom or get anything to eat we had to just stand around in a, a closed auto dealership waiting for our car to charge so that wasn't ideal but at least it worked which we absolutely needed in order to get down the road the good thing about charge points is though we haven't you now Again, it could just be our limited uh, travel. We haven't found one that we had to wait for, except I had to wait for one bolt at that uh, one in Sevierville because it was the only one there. That's the problem because sometimes those charge points are standalones. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, there were cars waiting at the EV Go. First time I've seen that, but that's also because we're in the Austin area mm -hmm. and there's a lot of EVs in the Austin, Texas area. Mm -hmm. um, Electrify America, we've encountered waits at them at the one here in Round Rock, in the, also in the Austin area, and that one in Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee. Yeah, Nashville's busy. And we weren't the only one. A guy with a massive YouTube channel, Aging Wheels, a couple of weeks after our road trip, went through that same charging stop, same thing, full, slammed in Nashville. It's just always busy there, I guess. Oddly enough, on the other side of that shopping center, did you know that there's over two dozen Tesla superchargers? Oh, yeah. Oh, just on the other side of the Kroger in that same shopping center? Yeah. It's just More on Tesla go. in a minute. Uh, so, but any other thoughts on ChargePoint? Eh, I the mean, you know. It's good that they exist. <laughs> and the other fast charging network that we've used frequently is EV Connect, uh, mainly because we like the charging station that is in Waco at the Road Ranger truck stop. Right. Uh, it's close to amenities. It's uh, relatively competitively priced. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a free wire, which is the battery uh, powered DC fast chargers. And it was full when we were coming down here on the trip that we're on right now. Uh, and, so I don't know how that's going to affect uh, the weekend, ho traveling on a holiday weekend. A lot of cars out, a lot of EVs out. Stand by for updates. Oh, the last two times we've been through there, though, one of the units has been down. The rest of the time, it's been very reliable. I've never had an issue charging at that one. Nope. Big screen, easy to read. Yeah, and it's a nice place to stop. It's got good amenities, so, so we like it. Good, good if you can go with EV Connect. Uh, fairly reliable as well. Uh, let's talk about level two charging for a while. Level two charging. Our favorite level two charger is where? Well, Cleburne, Texas, <laughs> because it's free. And what's the network? <laughs> it's Volta, right? You want to talk yeah. about the Volta? Because you used it more frequently than I have. Yeah, Volta is uh, an interesting model. What they do is they stick the, the uh, charging station in parking lots of malls or uh, movie theaters, and there's a big ad on it. Um, we did a video about it. But it's cool because it's free. You don't even have to have an app. You just plug and go like you have a Tesla. Uh, now it's only a level two charger, so it does take a while to charge. But I really like it for my Fiat 500e because that's the fastest that poor little car can charge anyway. And sometimes I'm in town and again, 88 miles of range on a good day. Sometimes I'm driving around and I think, I get a little range anxiety. I'm worried it might not make it home with enough cushion. So I'll just plug in at the movie theater and sit there and read a book or something for half an hour and then I'm good to go. Sometimes when I've had the car and I've had to go to work and then go through Cleburne as well and I'm worried about range, uh, it's usually around dinner time. So I'll go through a drive-through, get my dinner, pull up to the Volta and plug in. 
and eat my dinner and then I've got enough. What that charger is really meant for though, it's sitting at a movie theater and you're allowed to plug there for three hours. You show up with your EV, you plug in, you go in and watch a movie mm -hmm. and come out and you've got a full tank. Right. That's, that's its intent. Uh, Volta also has a DC fast charging we learned a, a couple of months back uh, at the factory outlet mall uh, right. north of Fort Worth that's free DC fast charging for the first 30 minutes and then after that it charges you. But, but still pretty neat. You can still get a really, uh, you can still get a charge very inexpensively using those voltages And a half there. an hour on fast charge is a decent amount of charge. That's definitely worth it. When I posted my charging test video on that Volta DC fast charger, somebody commented that, wow, I've never been able to get one to work. Well, I guess we were fortunate. The one that we used worked. Uh, yeah. And we've, I haven't experienced a single problem with the Volta ever. Mm -mm, no. The other uh, public charging that we've done uh, on level two, aside from the charge point that we've already mentioned, was that EOS charge that we came across that had the solar panel assist. Right. I remember. We were so excited about that. And we it thought had this it might big be. big TV screen. We thought it might be free, but it was not. That one charged us. Um, yeah. Now, level two charging is not expensive unless you want to get your whole charge there. You want to park the car there for four hours. If it's charging you, then that's going to add up. Uh, but if you just want a little top off to get about 10 more miles or something like that, it's not that bad. It, it takes a bit of time, but yeah. Uh, and if you were going to sit and eat fast food anyway, it's fine. If you're, yeah. if you're somebody who, uh, lives in an apartment or a rental house and, or in some other way, you cannot put your own level two EVSE on your house to charge your car at home and you have to rely on public level two charging. Which I don't recommend. You could do it in a pinch at the EOS, but do it with the free ones. Yeah. Find the free ones. Yeah. And uh, the free ones or the inexpensive ones. That level two charge point, we could probably charge a full tank on five bucks. Yeah, not too bad. But it'd be 20 or 30 on that EOS. Yeah, and it would take a long time. It'd take a long time. You gotta park the car there and then walk your wherever you're going and, and all of that stuff. Um, so let's go back to some DC fast charging. You want to talk about expensive. The closest DC fast charger to where we live is at a 7-Eleven and it's on a network called 7Charge. I've seen videos about them, but the only ones that I've seen in person is that one by us. Yeah. And the per kilowatt hour rate was very high. It was 70 something cents. I think that's the only one we went to that was actually higher than gas at the same place. At, at the time, it would have been higher than gasoline. Now mm -hmm. that, uh, EV Go at the Flying J truck stop in Knoxville is higher than gas. Oh yeah. If we weren't using the EV Go credits. Right. Uh, if we run out of credits, we probably won't go to that one. Sad trombone. Right. Wah, wah. Uh, because there's an Electrify America 10 miles up the road and it would right. be half the cost of that EV Go there. But the seven charge is kind of pricey. And the last time I tried to charge there was with the live wire and I had an issue. One of the two That's units right. was down and the station's less than a year old. Yeah. But at least it's right next to a 7-Eleven. So if you need, if you get a little, you know, peckish and you need a snack or a drink or a bathroom break, you're all right there. Mm -hmm. um, then there was the, our one and only experience at Red E Charge. Right, Red E. It's like Red E, but it's a, like the letter E that is the color red. It took me a while to get that charge started uh, mm -hmm. because the screen, because of the sunlight, I couldn't read the screen, even though the screen was bigger than me, it seemed. It was a huge screen, not for ads, just for information. Yeah. But it wasn't giving prompts on the screen. It was talking to me, and we were right next to the interstate. I couldn't hear the speaker. Yeah. Uh, so it took a couple of times to get that charge started, but we got a good charge out of it. And yeah. That that one happened to be at a Shell station, which in Texas is connected to this business called uh, Best Texas Smokehouse. Oh right. Which has really good barbecue inside. And it's yeah, it's a nice place to stop. They they have actual food and plus convenience store stuff. Nice bathrooms usually. Yeah. And then the last one that I've done a tour to chargers video on that we haven't mentioned, saving this one for last, is Yum, Tesla. Da -da, Tesla. I was able to take my Bolt to a. Tesla supercharger near where we live in Fort Worth, Texas that has a magic dot connector and do a charge test on it. And I ended up doing uh, four separate plugins over a couple of days. One, because I needed the charge. Two, because I was trying to make the video. Three, because I was trying to make the video. Uh, and the first two, the day that I tried it, the first one failed to initiate. I had a problem getting started at the Tesla supercharger. <laughs> it's supposed to be super reliable. And, but it, it worked the second time. Um, and then my audio was bad. I had to go reshoot the video again the next day. Um, but for those of you who don't know, the Magic Dock is one that you can use on 
a non-Tesla car as long as you have an adapter. No, it has the it is the adapter. Oh, it, it has the adapter it's, with it. Yeah, I was and wrong. so you check in on the app like you would with any other CCS charger. Right. And once you do that, you select which uh, Tesla supercharging station you're on, like mm -hmm. 7B or something like that, mm -hmm. and you swipe, and it unlocks, it sends a signal to unlock the adapter so that when you pull the plug, right. the NACS plug comes out with the CCS adapter on it. I was thinking of a different thing. And um, so that that way it plugs it, it'll it'll plug in. Uh, and the first time I tried it, it, it didn't work. And the second time, same charger, it did. Uh, prices are not as good as the Electrify America, but they're okay. They're not they're not ast astoundingly on pricing. And usually Tesla superchargers have a lot more plugs there that you can plug into. This one had like 16 plugs. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is the plugs are short. Very. And so they may you may not reach where your charge dock is. I mean, it's designed for a Tesla that has a charge dock, charge dock in the uh, front. Right. Well, in, in the very back of the car, the oh, Tesla's right. the Tesla's charge port is underneath the rear left rear tail light, right. and so it it or the marker on the side, mm -hmm. it's right at the very back end left side of the car, is right on the corner. So that plug is designed to just go that far, and it's, on some of really our short. other cars, it's, it just yeah, doesn't reach. It just doesn't always reach. On yeah. my car, where the charge port is back by the driver's door, the plug won't reach. Mm -hmm. So I have to go to the trailer pull through or I have to park sideways and block three plugs. And a lot of other CCS vehicle owners are in that same boat. Now the Ionic 5, the EV6, their charge ports are also under that, that light, that taillight, mm -hmm. right at the very back end corner of the car, but they're on the right side because they're built in countries where the car where it's right hand drive ah. as opposed to left hand drive. Mm. And so the charge port's on the other side of the car. And so they've got to park in the wrong spot at the Tesla supercharger to plug in for the cord to reach. I don't know how someone in an F-150 Lightning is going to be able to charge without blocking multiple spots at one of these Tesla superchargers without longer cords. And you still have the issue of having to check in with the app and all of that. Tesla's superchargers work seamlessly and wonderfully fast if, if it is a Tesla. If you have a Tesla. My experience with the Tesla on the Denver road trip that I did uh, was you plug in, boom, flashes blue, 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 green, and you're charging. But it's nowhere near that fast using the Magic Dock. Uh, it's Magic Dock, it's about the same speed as Electrify America. Uh, it's just, there's more Tesla superchargers out there and there's more plugs at the station. So if one is down, you have other options. It's just right. the cables are too short. Right. That's gonna be a problem when uh, all these other non-Teslas start having the NS NACS plug or they start getting their adapters in the next couple of months with the network opened up for Ford and GM and Hyundai and, and mm -hmm. Kia and Mercedes and Rivian and Polestar. Uh, and honestly, what we were talking about in our other video about how a lot of the newer EV owners are not well educated on how to use these types of chargers, you're going to have some conflict, I think. Yes, you're going to have conflict and you're going to have uh, whole lessons in charger etiquette that uh, people, people just people don't. People are going to be frustrated. People oh. are going to be confused. People are going to be on edge. As EV adoption increases, uh, those of us who were the, I guess, even this many years in, we still get called early adopters, but... I called us that. <laughs> well, it's not just you. It's not just you. Other people have called us early adopters, too. Okay. Uh, but... Um, more and more people, we're used to a certain etiquette at these charging stations and yeah. other folks are just going to treat it, are, aren't going to follow that. And it's, there, there might be conflict. There's definitely going to be conflict about, hey, you're parked in front of the wrong charger. Well, it's the only one that the cord will reach to. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, I've got the trailer. You're supposed to leave that charger for me. Sorry. It's the only one that the plug will reach to my charge port on. Yeah. Don't block. Oh, I got a comment. Don't block Tesla superchargers with slow charging bolts. Guys, the peasants are coming, man. We're going to be there. Yeah, I'm blame, sorry, blame Tesla, Tesla, guys. I'm Tesla. real sorry. <laughs> blame Tesla. Blame General Motors for making the deal. Yeah. They made the deal. And so if we can charge there, we're going to charge there. Now, I... We'll try to be nice. We'll be nice. But and, try to be nice to we'll us, please. we'll follow the proper etiquette. But, you know, we got we to gotta charge somewhere, y'all. Mm -hmm. Um... All right, so is, that, is that the wrap-up? That's about enough. That's covering, that's kind of summarizing our thoughts on all of the different charge networks that we've done one of those Tour to Chargers videos on. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue but that series if we find new charging networks. By far, the best, most efficient place to charge is at your home if you have a level 2 charger installed on your 
domicile. That is the best, and that's the way we charge almost all of the time. Only road trips is when we do all this other stuff. Yeah, probably about 95% of our charging is just plugging in at home. That's what's recommended. All of this, all of this stuff in this in this series of videos is mainly for road tripping. It's right. public charging, and uh, it seems to be the thing that everybody cares about. They see mm -hmm. an electric vehicle. What's how far, how far do you get on a single charge, and how long does it take to charge up? Because they're only thinking you're only ever going to road trip with it. Yeah. And well, they don't see you charging at your house, so no. it just doesn't occur to them that that's a thing. That, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I can fill up at home? Uh, so yes. anyway, thank you very much. Uh, if you found this video informative or mildly entertaining, give us a <laughs> like. If you want more content please uh, like this, please subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments for us. And thank you very much for watching.